The single most important pitch you throw is what? Always, okay? When we're throwing our fastballs today, I want you guys to really focus in on where you're throwing it. I don't want it to be just to the glove. I want it to be a smaller spot in the glove. A very precise, detailed spot for your fastball. As we continue to get older, the field gets bigger, our normal fastball usually isn't going to be blown by guys anymore. We have to be very, very precise on where we're throwing it. So that means when we come in on the hands, we come in on the hands. When we're trying to spot a fastball away, we're going away. There's rarely a time when we're going to go middle, middle. Sometimes we're going to do that when we're behind in the count 3-0. We need to throw a strike, let him get himself out. But when we're not in a situation like that, we are telling our catcher where we want to throw that fastball. Move it in, move it out, move it up, move it down. Okay. When you throw your first two sets of fastballs here, so you're going to go six fastballs, take a break, go your next six, you're telling him which side you want him to go on. Okay. For now, we're just splitting the plate in half, in and out. We'll work on up, down later, but for now, let's go in and out. Okay. Two seam, four seam, whatever you need to do, be intentional about where you're throwing the ball. Here you go, good round. Good. Good, Austin. Good. Keep on the strike zone. Good job, boys. Another set of fastballs. Now that we're a little bit loose, make sure we're using our bottom half, driving off our backside, right? We're not intentionally pushing, but we're gonna be strong with our lower half when we go here. Stay closed as long as you possibly can. That lead side hip, your lead side shoulder elbow, needs to be straight in line with where you're throwing it. As soon as we open up, that's when we have some problems. Stay closed as long as you can, get that good arm whip, have a good fastball set. So get ready. Again, job catchers. Why is it important to have good arm action? What, when you see someone and you say, wow, he has good arm action, what does that mean? That's good arm motion, like the way he comes here to where he's going, he's really pointed. Mm -hmm. Like in the about right here, or just like. Okay. To add on to Austin, he's broken and he's just about to get that whip. So that's the key word there is, is whippy. We want that arm to be whippy. When we have good arm action, that means from the time that hand comes out of the glove to a release point that our arm is coming through pretty fast and it's real loose and real whippy. Okay, Here's what good arm action does for secondary pitches, meaning life after your fastball. It gives your change-ups, your curveballs, your cutters, your sliders late action, late movement. Right? That doesn't mean a lot to a 12-year-old, but it means a lot to high school guys. It means a lot to college guys and pro guys who recruit guys, who look to sign guys, they want to see late life on the ball. Late life is created by having good arm action. When you have good arm action on a changeup, that ball, as it nears the plate, has some kind of funky movement to it. It has some really good movement on a slider, on a cutter, on a, uh, a curveball. 
late life. A lot of college coaches are always asking, always talking to us about, and we really like him because he's got good late life to his ball. That's directly related to good arm action. So as we progress now into our change-ups and cutters, make sure our arm action is the same as it was with their fastballs. So I felt like you guys were throwing pretty hard right there. Now we need to make sure our arm stays the same for our off-speed pitches. So good arm action with your change-up, see if we get a little light life to it. Good arm action with your cut fastball, see if we get some late movement. Again, obviously you guys know this, that, that late movement will mess any hitter up. That hitter's already got in his mind, he's made up to swing it. He maybe reads fastball, and it might be a fastball, but it's got late movement to it. He might read change up, he thinks it's gonna be right down the middle, and then it has some downward movement, right? So late movement is great. Make sure your arm action is really quick, okay? Go pick up your base. Sinkers, whatever else you throw. Action, real whippy here, boys. Grady, I need you to be more compact. I need you to clean that up. We got a lot of pieces and parts moving around, okay? What I mean by that is this arm's flying this way, this one's going this way. Your legs need to just stay nice and easy, very simple. Great job, Ian. That's excellent. Okay, next teaching point. As we get older, we need to have a second and a third pitch, right? When we have a second and a third pitch, we've elevated our game as a pitcher way higher than other guys. There's other guys trying to develop a second and third pitch. But we don't move on to a second or third pitch until we know our fastballs can be strikes. Always. It's the single most important pitch we throw. You can get away with eating up innings in a game with just a fastball. In and out, up and down, right? We're changing their eye level. We're, we're moving it around a little bit. There's going to be days as you get older when you're throwing your change up and your cutter and when you're older a curveball and a slider that those days some of those pitches don't work. And you're gonna recognize in the bullpen and you're gonna say, oh my gosh, my change up, I'm gonna have to put that in my back pocket today. And what we do from there is we make sure that we trust our fastball. That's why you throw so many fastballs when you're here training, because your fastball is something you can always rely on, right? There, God forbid that day happens when this change up and this cutter, both are not working that day and it's your day to pitch. It will happen to you, but we're gonna be like, you know what, I'm good. Because I know that I can spot my two seam and four seam pretty well, okay? So if you're not comfortable with or happy with that last set, it's okay. But just know I wouldn't let you move on to that set if I didn't think your fastball was good enough. I had a young man earlier who was very unhappy with his first two fastball sets. He did two more fastball sets until he was good, realizing, understanding at a young age that that fastball is his most important pitch. Coach isn't putting you in the game to throw junk pitches the whole time. He's putting you in the game to throw strikes so those hitters can get themselves out. Because they do lessons as well to hit, right? So they can be a better hitter. So there's, they're gonna make mistakes too. So we wanna just pitch to contact, allow them to get themselves out sometimes, and most of the time that happens with fastballs when you can move them in and out, up and down. So for your next set, we're gonna go fastballs in to a righty, off speed away. Fastballs in, off speed away. Show me you can throw back-to-back -back pitches, two different pitches in two different locations. Got me? All right, let's go. Now 
No, hold on. So here's what else this set does. Here's what else this set does. The other thing this set does is you can see back-to-back -back pitches if your arm speed being different if you slow it down. Whenever we slow that down, that's what happens. So when you have that good arm whippy with your fastball, that same arm whippy like we talked about that creates late moot, you have to have the same thing with your changeup. So the reason we do these back-to-back -back is so we can see if something looks different, okay? Your arm speed is usually pretty good. When you throw your change up, it's slower. And everybody, everybody knows what's coming. Keep that same arm action with your change up that you do with your fastball. Good. Same, same now, Graham. There you go. Grady, when you go, if your body goes here and your arm drags, that's why your ball stays here. You understand what I mean? Like if you're, not that you're stepping this way, but if you're throwing, you open up too early, this all goes here, your arm drags through the zone, and it stays there, okay? Everything has got to stay in line with your catcher. Here, you're off speed here. Grady, good job, right there. I don't care if you eventually fall that way, but it's after your release. Very good. Good. Excellent. Good job, catchers. Go get them, then we'll talk. Okay, good or bad thing? Throwing back-to-back -back pitches that are two different pitches in the same location. Good. Good. It depends where the good. Is. Yeah. So if we throw to a left-handed hitter, a two-seam away, and then a change-up in the same spot, good or bad? That depends on how much your two-seam moves. Good, bad, or coach, I don't know. Okay, so now you have to tell me why. Uh, because it's going to look like you're too soon, but it's actually going to die at like the last That's second. That's really, really good. Okay, throwing two pitches back to back in the same location that are two different pitches is very good. We don't want to get in the habit of a pit, as a pitcher that we throw, hey, every four seam he throws when they go back to the dugout, hey, every four, we always know it's a fastball because when it's away, it's a fastball. But every time he throws a changeup, man, it's always in. We can't fall into different tendencies where they know what we're doing every single time. So it's kind of like tipping your pitch. Sure, but we want to make sure that we can throw all of our pitches in the same location, whether it's a righty or lefty, okay? So on this set, I want you guys to go a fastball then an off speed, but I want wherever your fastball ends up, throw your off speed in that same spot. I want that hitter to see a fastball away, then also see a cutter there, or a fastball in and then run a change up in on his hands too. Okay, because now he's like, oh man, I'm not sure what that pitch is. Because it's in the same location as the fastball. We want him to think it's going to be a fastball. Like you said, then all of a sudden it's not because we disguised it. Okay, all right, here we go. Good. Excellent. Good job, Joe. Good job, Graham. Good job, Grady. Good 
Okay, so for this set, we'll probably go two more sets and then we're done. So for this set of six, I want you to isolate one half of the plate, either in or out. Doesn't matter to me, let your catcher know before, and I want us to throw, this will lead to the final conversation about um, being able to throw multiple pitches in, in certain locations, but on this last set, on this second to last set, just tell him, hey, here, here, point, and then throw any pitch you want on that side. Okay, we're, what we're doing, what we're saying here is that um, we are facing a hitter who absolutely loves inside pitches. So we're going to make sure we execute pitches on the outside half, no matter what pitch it is. Okay. Or we're saying we're going to absolutely try to jam this guy because he wants to extend his arms and barrel up a ball. So anything we throw to this guy is going to be on the inside half. Whatever mentally you need to tell yourself when you get up there, whether it's a righty or lefty, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and go on that side of the plate. Good? Yep, All right, here we go. Keep working. Good. Good, Grady. Good, Joe. Both you guys, excellent. Good work, boys. Jojo, great job. Hey, outside. Good work. Good job, Cole. Hey, so listen, your second and your your second, Austin, your second and third pitch are I have a lot of kids who will say, Coach, I have five different pitches. And I'll say, okay, and I watch them and they really only have two, because three are similar. Okay? I'm all for having multiple pitches, and it's really good to have three pitches you can throw for strikes. But it's even better to have two pitches you can throw for strike anytime. We don't like to move on as coaches to a third or fourth pitch until we know we can throw one or two for strikes at all times. So having two pitches that are really good is a, is a tremendous thing to do for any pitcher. And then we can move on to a third pitch. Okay? So understand that if you want to go to a fourth or fifth pitch at some point as you get older, we'll do it, but you got to show me that you can throw three for a strike anytime you want. Okay, because right, our goal is not only to throw three pitches um, in certain locations all the time, but we want to be able to throw three pitches for strikes at all times, no matter what the count is. 2 1, 3 1, what are you looking for on a 3 1 pitch as a hitter? Absolutely, you are. It's a hitter's count. You're looking for 2 0 at 11, 12, 13 years old. A lot of guys are just going to pump a fastball in there. I want us to be so good where we throw a 2 1 cutter, a 2 1 changeup. Get that guy on his front foot and get that guy out. It's pitching backwards, right? It's pitching backwards. It's not always throwing off speed pitches when you're up in the count, okay? For your last set, you're going to do anything you want, working on whatever you want for your last one. If it's, man, I'm having trouble with my fastball today, my changeup, my cut. Do whatever you want in your last set. Um, finish strong. If you feel like you need a seventh pitch or an eighth pitch because you just don't feel right on your last couple, then take a couple extra pitches. Okay? But last set, best set you have late in the game here. Use your legs. Make sure your mechanics are in line and go to work. Except for a curveball. Mm, that's so good. That is really good. Austin, you're going to get a lot of guys out with that pitch. Because he's going to catch that frame it for a strike. 
If they don't swing at it, but most of them are going to swing at it and they're never going to touch it. Good spot, Jojo. Okay, did all four of you thank your catchers? Yeah, thanks, Coach. <clears throat> last, thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. The last thing I want to tell you guys is this. Okay, the single most important, in my opinion, player on the field is the pitcher because the game starts and ends with the pitcher. It, they're the guys that are getting guys out. They're the guys that are uh, on the bump. They don't have a shot clock. They get to get up there. And when you have dominating pitchers, a lot of times you're going to dominate that game. Yes, we need to play defense and hit the ball to score um, and have really, really solid defense. And I see you laughing because you guys think that the catcher is, but that's exactly where I'm going with this. In my opinion, the second most important person on the field is your catcher. That catcher is sacrificing his entire body. It's a thankless job. It's a job that you do when it's 95 degrees out. It's very hot. It's sweaty. You've got gear on. It's not fun. But they do it over and over again for you as a pitcher. They're back there for you. They're stealing strikes for you. They're blocking a ball and getting bruises on their arms for you. So it is vitally important that after every game we throw, after every bullpen we throw, that we're always thanking our catcher. You guys already do that because you know better, but we want to make sure we understand how important they are to us. My high school guys sacrificed their whole two hour practice to catch bullpens. The next day we're going to let them hit and let other guys catch bullpens, but the sacrifice they make for you guys is invaluable. So we want to always make sure that we respect the fact of how much work they put in, okay? The, my catchers at my older levels are some of my favorite players on the team. They're, they're the guy, I'm cl as close to my catchers as I am my pitchers because they got to know. They got to know when to call timeout and run out there and tell you what you're doing wrong. Telling you, hey, stay closed. Hey, keep your head up. Keep your chin up. We're good. Let's go. Let's go get them. They're in control of the game as much as you are. So we always want to make sure we're thankful for them, okay? You guys feel like you did pretty well today? I think you guys were pounding the zone really well with multiple pitches, and that's the key is multiple pitches. There's going to be days when you can't, and we just need to say, I'm going my fastball all day today because i got to make sure it's right. <clears throat> today was not one of those days because you threw multiple pitches for strikes. Good work. See you guys next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks, boys. Thanks, Good work. Thank you.